Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. You're joining me on board good old narrowboat Tilly and today we're going to have a quick chat about some general tips for walking out in the cold weather and over the winter and I'll start really by saying obviously this is just a few general things to think about and a few general tips that you can't apply a blanket statement to every walk that you do when it's cold for example. I mean if you're heading up mountains then you're probably going to sweat an awful lot more and might want to wear different clothes to if you're going out on a nice flat well for example if you're just walking a few miles down the towpath you're unlikely to be sweating and huffing and puffing as much as if you were hiking up mountains all day long so obviously think about each uh, walk and each trip as its own individual thing and just be sensible really so, without further ado, let's dive in. The first things that you're probably going to want to take with you are your clothes and the backpack to keep any bits of food or goodness knows what else in. So, when it comes to clothing, I would always say, obviously, if it's going to rain, you might want waterproof clothing and things like that. Um, equally, as I've just mentioned the clothes that you're actually wearing if you're going up mountains or walking a nice short distance along the flat are probably going to be completely different types and really each individual person will find what they find comfortable and if I was to stand here and say no you should be wearing this then I would be an outrageous uh, character so please as I say experiment, be sensible and find the sort of balance of how many layers you want. You might want to wear a few uh, smaller layers or lighter layers like I tend to do so that it means you can easily peel off a layer if you get hot and then put them back on if you're warm rather than wearing say for example one big thick coat and then not much underneath which means you've either got to have your big layer on or your big layer off. Something that is very handy is obviously just general waterproof clothing and I have got here a waterproof coat and my waterproof trousers and as you can see as I'm sure you're aware a proper thin layer like this is going to roll up as easy as possible into a very small lightweight package just to prove the point there is if I can find my way into the middle there whoops I'm back again <laughs> there is obviously the trousers in there as well so that's very lightweight and it doesn't take up much um, space in your bag speaking of bags I have got, this is my sort of my wet weather walking bag, this is from Jack Pike and in general for just uh, simple single day walks I normally take uh, about a 25 30 litre rucksack. I'll put links to all these on Amazon in the description as well if you want to see exactly what I'm uh, pointing at and what I'm talking about but that's my general walking bag as you can see you've got an extra pocket in the top here you've got just a nice big open uh, full size pocket there no uh, separators nothing so you can just keep bundling a lot of stuff in and then you've got two pockets on either side which are obviously very handy to pop water bottles and drinks or anything like that in so that's the bag that I tend to use on the subject of clothing I would definitely recommend something like this this I'm not sure what the actual name of this is but basically instead of having a scarf you've just got something like this that's just a big tube and it's a sort of more fleecy lined around this bottom section and then the top section is a far more stretchy material and this literally is as simple as it gets but it's so much better than a scarf from my experience you literally pop it over your head you can obviously wear it just as a proper full round your neck scarf I don't know, I cannot think, the word and term for these is escaping me, I can only apologise, but you'll have seen them in walking shops and there's all sorts of different makes and different designs, but this is a nice simple one, just a plain old tube, and obviously you've got simple wearing it as a scarf, you can pop it up and practically cover your entire face, double a couple of layers back, depending on how uh, the weather's going, and of course you can still have all of your ears and everything covered, and then pop a normal hat on, so something like this, I well, for biking especially, I mean, I, I bike a lot in and out of town in the early mornings in the cold when I'm going to work or going to my friend's house or to my family, and something like this has been probably one of the most, well, probably one of the most used and useful items that I've ever been given as a gift. And again, you can fetch the bottom up, and basically you've got an awful lot of options for how you want to wear this. It is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, moving swiftly on.
when it comes to taking gadgets and gizmos and things like that out, obviously if it's going to be pouring down, you might want to try and take as few items like that as possible, but a lot of people will be very keen to take a nice fancy camera, so make sure you've got a waterproof case for that to get those excellent photos, and a lot of people obviously will be having their mobile phones on them, and one of the best things that I can say, it's the simplest tip ever, and you've probably seen it ten times over or thought of it yourself, but the best thing ever for keeping a phone or something like that uh, safe from the wet rain it's obviously not a hundred percent waterproof but for general showers and that it gives you a lot of protection and that is take your phone take one of these nice simple self-sealing bags you can obviously get bigger ones like lunch bags freezer bags all sorts of types and obviously pop your phone into the bag seal it up and you're good to go. And I'm not sure if you can see there or not, but the layer is still thin enough to allow you to actually use your phone through it. Now, as I say, that's not 100% guaranteed waterproof. Well, it's definitely not 100% waterproof, but if it's just in your pocket or in your bag, then it definitely helps keep the rain out. So that's definitely another big plus. Right. When it comes to gloves and things like that, I think that's one of the biggest areas that I probably should have mentioned in the clothing part. Now, what I find when riding my bike is that if I wear big thick gloves, such as these, then the fact that my fingers and hands are being spread out so much by all the padding actually makes them colder in the draft because I'm not able to sort of clench my fists tightly together to sort of try and keep some warmth in there. Now, what I also wear are these as my general summer gloves, which are a lot thinner, and I've been wearing these a lot more for walking and just generally going about the place uh, as standard day-to-day -day life recently, because I just find there's something about them, first of all, because they're so uh, thin, they're obviously not going to keep your hands warm from the draft and that, but the fact that they're so much smaller, you've got much better use of your hands, easily pop them in your pockets to try and keep them warm and all the rest of it, and I don't know, I just prefer these, so that's something to think about. Uh, you might find, oh, these are rubbish and my hands are really cold, but as I say, Clothing and things like that and comfort are all individual matters which I can't possibly comment and tell you exactly what you should be doing. Another way that the weather can really try and get at you is if you're walking into a breeze or if you're in high winds and the wind's blowing against you, whether that's throwing dust at you on a dry day or whether it's throwing rain in your face or hail or even snow, it's not a pleasant thing to be walking into. And recently I've had a lot of trouble with eczema and terrible dry skin around my eyes, which led me to start wearing my biking glasses which I have this the simple pair like this I think they only cost about a tenner and they come with uh, three different lenses clear lenses yellow lenses and uh, normal sunglass lenses and just popping something like this on wearing a cap as I always do in well almost all of my life when I'm not asleep um, obviously the peak to give you a bit of protection uh, put your head down and then the glasses to stop anything just blowing directly into your eyes from the front definitely two things that I'm a huge huge fan of plus if you use something like the yellow lenses that I have then my goodness me the world can look an awful lot brighter and sunnier than it really is <laughs> moving swiftly on I'd say what else do we really want well, you might want hand warmers. Now, there's various types, and you're probably familiar with the ones that have the weird sort of gel in them, and you bend a little bit of metal, and then it warms up. But something that I prefer to those is, and again, I'm sorry that I keep looking down and disappearing, because I haven't planned this out very well at all, but something that I really like is this um, Zippo hand warmer. It comes in this little case like this, but if we pop it out, it almost does appear to be a giant lighter. And basically, what you do with one of these, you're definitely going to want to do this before you go out, is take some lighter fluid, fill it up. There's like a proper little tool that you can say whether it gives you like six hours or 12 hours burn time. And you fill the inside there with lighter fluid. Then basically, before you head out, you just hold the flame up to this for a long, long time. Well, 30 seconds maybe. And it just starts a, I think it's a catalytic burner or some term like that. But it basically will then just burn and burn and burn nice and warmly. It gets extremely hot sometimes as you're moving around. And these will burn for a good 12 hours. I've definitely tried it out and been out and about with it in the evenings, then gone to bed and woke up in the morning and still found that it was actually warm to the touch. So these have definitely got a very good burn time on them. And because they're um, obviously 
not needing to be boiled in water like the other type of hand warmer that I just mentioned, you can, if you so wish, take something like this out with you, particularly if you're camping, so that you can refill it and then use it again the following day, or even if it goes out while you're out and about, you can refill it and use it again there and then. Like I say, though, needing to hold a light up to it or hold a flame up to it for a long time is definitely something that might take a while and might not be... Um, might not be ideal to do out on the windy hillside somewhere. When it comes to things like lighting fires and keeping warm, we're obviously going to be moving from the realm of just general walking into survival and bushcraft and all that sort of thing, so I'm not going to get too much into it. But in terms of general emergencies and things like that, you may definitely want to try and keep well, people posted on where you're going to be, how long you should be, what your route's going to be, all of the usual sensible precautions to take. One of the things that you might want to take with you in terms of lighting fires and that is obviously a good lighter or two. Now, as you can see, I've got my little Zippo here, which I absolutely love. I just think it's fantastic. I don't smoke, but my goodness me, I just love this thing. It's just great. Anyway, as you can see, I've got a nice big flame on it there. Something like the hand warmer, like I say, you literally just hold it up to the flame like that for a good while until it starts to glow. But we're not particularly interested too much in that at the moment. If you were out camping or going to be out for a prolonged time, then things that you might want to take, obviously, are waterproof matches, things like that. Um, obviously, you've got the absolute classic of your flint and steel, Swedish steel, Swedish flint, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. But these I do absolutely love, and this again is something that, oh, it's just a great little item. Anyway... Something that I've uh, found fantastic, and this is only sort of for my own pure amusement uh, rather than actual survival practical application, is the Kelly Kettle. And this basically is a survival stove, as they call it. So this is what your actual Kelly Kettle looks like. And basically, when I lift this up, you'll see that it's actually almost entirely hollow. It's like a polo shape, basically. And all the water that you put into this, whoops, all the water that you put into this is stored in this top part, but around the very edge. So you build a little fire in this bottom part, which then shoots up here, and it really does go like a rocket and like a jet engine with flames roaring out of the top here. And that obviously can then be um, heating up your water and boiling water very quickly indeed. And the whole sort of idea behind this is you don't need any gas bottles or any lighter fluid or anything like that for it. You can literally just set a little fire and pop little sticks or twigs in and you've obviously got a little hole there to angle it into the breeze or not so that you can really get it going or start to maybe bring the temperature down a bit. I've also got, just in this bottom bowl at the moment here, a little kit that can put a little grill on the top and a little pan and things like that. And it's something I really do think it's fantastic and I really do enjoy generally just every now and then, just for the novelty, put it, set it up on top of the boat roof and basically just cook myself a little bit of soup or have a cup of soup with some water boiled out of it. Anyway, that's just something I thought I'd mention, just out of pure interest. Um, yeah, right then. I know that this video has been an awful lot of me just talking at you, holding various items in my hand, but I think at this point I'm going to say, looking around me, I've gone through an awful lot of general stuff. So, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and say thank you very much for watching. I suppose I've missed two massively obvious items if you're going out walking. A nice waterproof map and, of course, a compass. But we'll get to things like that in other videos, I'm sure. Anyway, moving swiftly on and finally, finally letting you get on with your day. I'll say thanks for watching. Check out my other videos for loads of outdoors, active sort of lifestyle stuff, as well as life on the boat, kayaking, biking, walking up mountains, all the usual sorts of things. Feel free to add me personally on Facebook and Twitter for general photos and updates from life on the canal. Please do like the Facebook page, over 2,000 likes now, which is absolutely unbelievable, so thank you very much. And check out my books available for the Kindle. Just search Amazon for The Narabout Lad or check all the links in the description for pretty much everything mentioned in this video. Until the next time, keep it bootworthy and farewell.